What's up YouTube friends, my name is Danny Jones and welcome to Jones Vibes. Jones Vibes. First and foremost, thank you so much for clicking on this video and if you enjoy it, please go ahead and click that lightning button, I mean like button, and then go ahead and hit subscribe as well as hit that notification bell. That'll keep you up to date when I make more content. And today we are talking about a brand new film from the MCU, Thor, Love and Thunder. And really quick before I get into everything, this video may contain some spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, you've been warned. And if you have, like me, let's rock. That was a Korg pun. So today I'm basically just gonna be talking about my initial thoughts of the movie, as well as some of my likes and dislikes. And I also would just love to start a conversation with you all just about Thor and the MCU. I feel like the fan base right now has a lot of questions. And so I would love to kind of start that conversation here on Jones Vibes. But first let's break down this cast as well as kind of what's happening in this movie. Okay, so this is now the second Thor film that writer director Taika Waititi has helmed. And he's become a pretty famous writer, director, actor, and just personality at this point. When he was announced for Ragnarok kind of back in the day, I really only knew him from what we do in the shadows, the movie, but over the last like, I don't know, five to 10 years, he's just really exploded onto the scene and well-deserved. I mean, he's, he's so talented. But as for the cast, we obviously have returning as Thor, Chris Hemsworth, who I don't really need to say much about other than he is just, He's the best. We have Natalie Portman, who honestly, it was great to see back as Dr. Jane Foster and now Mighty Thor. We have Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie. And I know I'm gonna get into my thoughts here in a little bit, but I do, just in case I forget, I do wanna say that I thought Tessa Thompson and the character of Valkyrie was so much better in this movie than Ragnarok. Something about it just really clicked for me. So, yeah. But then we have Korg, played by Taika, and we have Russell Crowe playing Zeus, which was just hilarious. I'll get, I'll get into that more. But the big one really is Christian Bale as Gore the God Butcher. And I'll say, he definitely didn't butcher this role, if you know what I mean. Not like that loser Patrick Bateman. <laughs> but this movie, it starts out with the origin of Gore. He's in the desert and his daughter dies, like they can't get any water. But then there's this god that he finds and he kills him and he obtains the necro sword. And that kind of, you know, starts his journey. And I don't know, it just had me hyped, like immediately. Christian Bale is just so, so dope. But then we pick up basically where we left off with Thor, but he's he's kind of, you know, he's slimmed down, he's lost the weight, and he's been running around with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and we kind of find him in a, a lost place. And there's some funny bits kind of mixed throughout this, but he ends up parting ways with the Guardians and meeting up with, obviously he has Korg, but then Valkyrie and Jane, who is now Mighty Thor. And as for her, the, the cancer storyline was really interesting. I honestly feel like it was rushed quite a bit, unfortunately. It's been a while since we've even seen Jane and all of a sudden it's just like, boom, she has cancer and then boom, she can wield Mjolnir and she's Mighty Thor. I, I mean, I don't know, it just moved really quick. But I thought her performance was absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's it's Natalie Portman, what do you expect? But, but Gore is basically trying to get Stormbreaker to use the Bifrost to enter into eternity to kill all the gods. And I'm pretty sure I just nailed that, so. And yeah, a little confusing, but let's just go with it. He kidnaps a whole group of like Asgardian and other species of, of children. And so Thor and his friends have to go on this crazy adventure to get them back and stop him from killing all the gods. And along the way, they go to Zeus for help. And I, I thought this was all pretty good. I'm a pretty massive Russell Crowe fan, so can't see myself being too disappointed <laughs> by anything, but he was, he was fantastic. It was, it was funny. But just kind of skipping ahead, we get to this final act, which was also very interesting. There's like this, I don't know, maybe 15 minute set piece that's all in black and white. There were some really creative choices made, like Gore's shadow creatures almost felt like they were stop motion animation, which I definitely want to kind of look into just the making of that whole scene because it looked and felt 
I don't know, different than anything that I've seen in the MCU so far. And the way that everything wrapped up was a bit more emotional than you'd expect with a Thor movie. You know, Jane dies and she tells Thor to keep his heart open. And I found myself tearing up a little bit there. I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> And Gore, instead of killing all the gods, he asks Eternity to bring back his daughter. And with his dying breath, he asks Thor if he will take care of his daughter. Basically, she represents love and he represents thunder. The ending little bit was a lot of fun and I'm curious to kind of see where all that goes. And that kind of leads into all the the post-credit stuff, the mid-credit and the post-credit, we see Zeus and he's getting his wound attended to and he calls to Hercules to hunt down Thor. So uh, I guess we'll see where that goes. He will go most anywhere to stop Thor. Tonight. But then the final post-credit is Jane Foster and she's in Valhalla and she meets up with Heimdall who kind of like welcomes her there. So I don't know, it wasn't Blade which kind of sucks, but it was, it was cool. And yeah, um, yeah. My initial thoughts are filled with mixed emotions. I'm like thunder and lightning over here. <laughs> As a whole, I'd say that I enjoyed the movie. It was fun. Is it my favorite Thor movie? No, but there's just a lot to kind of sit on with this one. I have a lot of likes and I have a lot of dislikes. My likes pretty much solely rest with the final act of the movie and all of the gore, the God Butcher stuff. Like I said, Christian Bale was absolutely freaking amazing. And he's truly, he's one of the best MCU villains that we've got. He's one of the better villains that I've just ever seen, period. The dude actually lived long enough to see himself become the villain. Rachel! And besides him, I enjoyed some of the emotional beats towards the end as well, um, between Thor and Jane. You know, Thor really realizing his love for Jane and then her dying and him kind of growing a bit. I liked that. I think it could have been fleshed out a little more, but I did like it, as well as all the kids going full Thor god mode was, was funny. But yeah, I mean, all of that certainly turned things around for me because from right after the opening scene, all the way until that final act, uh, I was a little thrown off to say the least. And that kind of brings up my dislikes. I think that there there is a lot of fun to be had with this movie. I think some general audiences are gonna love it, but to me, it felt like almost every other word of dialogue was a joke. And I think Taika did such a wonderful job with Ragnarok and it felt like exactly what the character needed at that point, but I feel like maybe he needed to, to reel it in instead of dialing it up in this movie. Obviously, this is all just my opinion, but you know, we're still playing in the MCU here. And those first few MCU films, like although they had some great writing and great humor, they still managed to feel grounded enough. And it kept me like fully engaged with what was going on. And this movie just, didn't. You have these screaming goats, which like I said, I think there's an audience for that and some people might find it hilarious. I didn't like the goats. The only goat I like is Michael Jordan, you know what I mean? But as we've gotten deeper into phase four, some of these movies just don't quite have the magic, no pun, that they used to. Don't get me wrong, Shang-Chi was fantastic. I loved it. No Way Home was Brilliant. And some of the shows have been great. Just things for a while were really connecting on a lot of different levels. And we're very lucky <laughs> for all of that. It was insane what happened all the way up until phase four. But things kind of feel like all over the place right now. And even though, like, if this was the first Thor movie that you ever showed me, I would have been like, oh my gosh, that was crazy. But we do have an original Thor movie and we're kind of rooting that character from that movie to now. And does it connect? I think in some ways, yes, but also in some ways, no. It's interesting to see him kind of just be treated as a comedic role for a majority of the film. He does get emotional at certain points, but there wasn't enough done in this movie to really make me feel those parts. I got emotional basically just because of the history that we have with these characters, not because of anything that was done in this movie. And then we also have another side of this, which is the MCU as a whole, and where is all of this going? We've been in phase four for a while now, and 
I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something, honestly. And, and like I said, this is all just my opinion. I would love to hear what you think about it. And if someone could help me kind of piece together everything that's happening. Could Secret Wars actually be on the horizon with Doctor Doom? And are we bringing in, you know, the Fantastic Four? How does all that connect? You know, we also have the multiverse <laughs> to deal with, as well as different timelines, different Earths. Um, we had Moon Knight with different gods. We have Blade as well as the Celestials and the Eternals. And not to mention Echo and Daredevil and Miss Marvel. Like things just seem kind of all over the place. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It could end up being a great thing if it all just connects and Kevin Feige's done it once, so I wouldn't put it past him. But all of that aside, just as for Thor, Love and Thunder, I, I liked it. I thought it was a fine addition to my collection. I may even end up seeing it again, just because of gore. Like, I just want to see Christian Bale as gore some more. That was cool. But anyway, yeah, <laughs> please let me know down in the comments what you thought about it. The MCU is a pretty hot topic right now. Ow, <laughs> it's hot. And I want to know, did you enjoy this? Where do you think all of this is heading? Please feel free to let me know. And also, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click the like button for me. That helps me get seen by more people just like you. As well as if you want to stay in touch, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me. I would love to have you become a a part of this Jones Vibes community that I'm building. I'm also on social media at Jones Vibes only. And yeah, this was Thor Love and Thunder. As always, I hope you all are safe, happy, and healthy, and I will see you next time. Jones Vibes.